Last May, gamblers across the country rejoiced when the Supreme Court overturned the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act, giving all 50 states the chance to legalize sports wagering. So far, seven have, with many more, including Montana, introducing legislation this year. Three different Montana organizations are expected to write bills. The coin operators, the Board of Horse Racing, and Intralot, who runs the state's lottery operations. One, or a combination of all three, is expected to be heard by the legislature later this month. For Montana's casino owners, the sooner the better. With us having simulcasts and now the fantasy sports, it's, it was like, well, we're ready to rock, kind of right now and ready to go. Kirk Dealer runs the Enterprise, the only casino offering paramutual horse race wagering in Billings. Players can monitor different tracks and wagers are made at kiosks connected to the tracks in real time. There's no doubt it has boosted dealers' business. It's been a really good thing to get people in the door. We're the only ones that offer it in Billings. I think there's four or five other ones in the state of Montana. And just having that little niche that, that brings people in the door and, and keeps them around. That's the key. It gets people in the door. Horse racing isn't dealers' biggest moneymaker, far from it, but it builds his customer base, which is what the Montana Tavern Association is hoping sports betting will do. Here's the most likely scenario. Businesses with gaming licenses will house kiosks connected to an out-of-state sports book, who will then set odds on matchups from wherever they're located. Players will have to come to the casino in Montana to make a wager, but will be able to use a mobile device while inside. What they call geofencing. So they'll geo geofence the, the casino, basically, and you can come in with your tablet or cell phone and deposit money through a debit card or cash, but you have to be in the confines of, of that establishment. The MTA believes sports betting is a means to an end, enticing a customer to visit who then might spend money in other ways. We want to see sports betting grow the Montana economy. And if we allow full mobile internet-based sports betting, you're going to take a big chunk of Montana money and send it straight out of state. There's not a significant amount of tax revenue that comes from sports betting. And so where the state's going to win is create more commerce in Montana, create more jobs in Montana. That could depend on Montana's tax rate. Nevada's sports betting tax is the lowest in the country at 6.75 percent, while Delaware and Rhode Island recently set theirs at 50 percent. New Jersey, meanwhile, has an interesting solution to the on-site versus mobile debate. The state offers fully mobile betting. A player never has to leave his or her house. But on-site taxes are less than 10 percent, while mobile bets are 13. Nevada's rules for mobile betting fall somewhere in between. Bettors must go to a brick-and-mortar sportsbook to deposit money into an account, but then can place wagers on a mobile device from anywhere in the state. It's been a, a, a tremendous uh, advantage because what you have with a mobile app is every one of these is a, is a, betting, is, is a betting window. It's a new customer. And it's a new customer. So uh, the fact that it does create a convenience element, when there's more convenience, that translates into more handle. Vinny Maliulo has run sportsbooks in Las Vegas for 30 years and now works for the Vegas Stats and Information Network, a gambling-centric network anchored by Montana's own Brent Musburger, who sides with Nevada's process. I guess I would say that the mobile operation is fine as long as you have to go to bricks and mortar to put your funds in. I'm not a fan of what I hear is happening in New Jersey where you can use PayPal and other things to fund an account. Here in Nevada, it's cash only. Can't use credit cards, which is always a good idea when you're talking about gambling. That's the conversation for how Montana would implement sports betting. But the question still remains, should it? MTA Government Affairs Council John Iverson says the answer may lie in a common treasure state phrase. Montana is just one big small town. The question of, uh, are we going to be able to bet on the Cat Grizz game? Montana is a small, low population state. Are we going to be able to place wagers on a game that you or I or your next door neighbor might have intimate knowledge or of um, you know, the condition of the quarterback's ankle or of the, the kicker's foot? Does it concern you uh, about the integrity of the sport and the, and the potential damage to the integrity of the sport? It's the reason Shoeless Joe Jackson was banned from baseball in his prime and Pete Rose isn't in the Hall of Fame. Sports betting will never completely get rid of its scandalous stigma, 
but its legitimacy is on the rise, and Montana may be the next frontier to embrace it. Now, even if Montana were to approve legislation as early as this month, there's a general consensus in conversations that bets wouldn't be taken for a year as rules and regulations get established and hardware is put into place. We'll bring you updates from the legislature as this process goes along.